Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Currency of Anarchy. I'm Josh Davis. Michael Freeman. And if you'd like to be a part of the conversation during our live tapings, please check us out at youtube.com slash user slash of Anarchy on Mondays at 9 p.m., 6 p.m. Pacific. And you can see the final product on the same channel, youtube.com slash user slash of Anarchy on Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific. And please check out our Facebook page at facebook.com slash Anarchy. If you're here during the live taping, uh, you can post any questions and comments to the thread that we posted on the page. And uh, please check out our sponsors. Holly Cogburn runs Homebody, a body care, vanity, and cosmetic products company. She contracts using USD, Bitcoin, Homebody products, and fresh produce. She is proud to say that she started the business without the assistance of bank loans. In her words, fuck bank loans and fuck their interest rates. For the most part, fuck banks. She paid for costs out of pocket and has steadily and sustainably grown from there. She believes in a free, fair, and reputation-based market. So please find Holly at homebodyco.com or facebook.com slash homebodyco. Introducing a customized media player with no monthly fees. A one-time purchase and installation of this device and you are ready to watch the latest movies and TV shows for free. Anything you can imagine or want to watch can be found on the box connected to your home internet connection. These units are locked and loaded using Android and Linux technology. You get access to over 7,000 channels all over the world, live, including sporting events, pay-per-view, wrestling, boxing, and more. Google Play Store comes pre-installed with access to all Android apps, including Popcorn Time, Showbox, Netflix, Facebook, Pandora, and more. All units are rooted and have capability to download or play from a USB or external hard drive. Please call Paul at 978-335-9842 or email him directly at info at paulhennick.com. Michael, uh, we have a very special guest, though he's not here yet, but he will be joining us. So uh, take it away, Michael. Uh, yeah, Jordan Page is going to come on the show. I'm sure all you guys are familiar with with his work. Um, he's a Liberty musician, and uh, he's going to come on the show and and play a song for us and talk talk some freedom. Oh, man. Yeah, and uh, in the meantime, we might as well just uh, get straight to the news that we found. Uh, so... But um, one thing I want to bring up before the actual news um, is that uh, the Mises Institute recently put out a few videos about, uh, or a few speeches that they've put together over the weekend, I think it was. And um, one of which really caught my attention is by Jeff Deist. Uh, he's the uh, current head of the Mises Institute. Um, so he replaced Lou Rockwell, I think, within the last year or two. Um, and it basically, it was about um, currency or money, really, uh, where it comes from, um, what gives it its value. Um, uh, basically, it's kind of what we were touching upon uh, last show um, with a uh, few of our guests during the round table. And I think that the, the, the main thing is we all care about the products that we buy with the money. What about the other half of the transaction, the money itself? Like, what is it? Why do we value it so much? I mean, it's to me, it's not about tradition. It's there's an actual reason behind it. Um, uh, it has to. The reason why 
uh, libertarians, at least, uh, like gold and silver and copper and platinum, that kind of thing, uh, is the quality itself. The, that's why. I mean, it's rare. It's uh, uh, it's not just that it's shiny. I mean, I like it because it's shiny, I guess. <laughs> but um, honestly, you know, there's some real reasons behind it. It's uh, They're rare. They don't take up much space. They hold a lot of value in that amount of space. Uh, and it's you can break it down. You can put it together even and form a bigger amount. Um, uh, that's where, like, you can do some accounting. That's how you know that you are being compensated uh, fairly uh, is usually through a currency or a money. And um, so, you know, barter as much as you want. It's a beautiful thing. Barter is great. It doesn't matter what kind of transaction. It can be a gift. I, that Gifts are great, obviously. Um, but if you even have a slight doubt about who you're wanting to do business with, then uh, the best way to keep account is through money. That's where I'm coming from. Um, and what do you have to say about that, Michael? Anything? Um, I mean, I don't need to, I don't really think that deep into it. I think that money is just a repre represent, I'm sorry, representative form of, of value, right? Like, um, I, I think that that barter is money. Like I think that anything that we we swap that you think is more valuable to you than what you currently have, and I deem that what you have is more valuable than what I have. I think that that's money, um, and and currency is just a representative form of that. Like instead of my tractor, I have um, this piece of shiny metal, and I like shiny too, by the way. Um, <laughs> but this piece of shiny metal is is worth. Um, or these five pieces of shiny metal are worth the same as that tractor, right? It makes it easier and easier to communicate and easier to make transactions with people, I think. Right. Yeah, um, yeah, that's the whole thing. Uh, the point of Jeff Dice's uh, speech was uh, precisely about the money itself, like um, the fact that it is 50% of every transaction. Uh, well, uh, most transactions today, I should say, it's not every transaction because there's such a thing as barter. Um, well, I'd, I'd say that if, it, if it's a voluntary transaction, that it, it's always fifty-fifty. You're not going to do it unless you place value and more value in that than what you have. Uh, right. If, what What I meant was, um, uh, I, I said that money is part of every transaction. That's not right. You know what I mean? Um, anyway, so we we always think about like he made an analogy to Honda cars or whatever, like uh, Honda puts out a product and they expect to be compensated. Um, but generally they're forced to accept dollars, um, federal reserve notes if it's presented to them. And, uh, but that's, that's not really uh, capitalism. It's not really voluntary at all. It's forced upon everybody. You know, if we're meant to, or if we're supposed to trade, and s someone wants to pay in Federal Reserve notes, then the other, uh, the business is forced to accept it if they want to make the trade, and it's just absolutely nuts. Um, so, the point is to think about the quality of the money. So, there's nothing wrong with money itself. Uh, but there's something wrong with fiat currency. There's something wrong with um, tender laws, that kind of thing. Anyway, so, uh, but yeah, let's move on uh, to actual news, Michael. You have uh, a couple things lined up. Let's start with this one. Coming from RT, um, X Blackwater Guard gets life a 30 year, 30 year sentences for Baghdad massacre. Um, Four men who worked in the private military contracting form, formerly known as Blackwater, were sentenced in Fetty Court on Monday, um, seven years after the ma they massacred Iraqi civilians in Niswar Square, Baghdad. Um, the four men, who cares about their names, right, um, began in D.C. on Monday and later in the afternoon. Yeah, sentenced to 30 years. Uh, they left 14 civilians in Iraq dead as a as a result of this, and 
<laughs> I don't know. It's nice to see some accountability, I guess, or something. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I was looking through the article, and it's not very... It didn't look very um, sourced, and I didn't want to go can finish going through it. So, yeah, um, I'm not sure, how much you can trust that stuff? Yeah, uh, but here's another one from MSN um, about this shooting that happened in Tulsa, Oklahoma, um, on Monday, where basically this guy's running away from some police, and they tackle him to the ground. One of the cops puts his knee on the this guy's neck. And this other guy is not even a cop. What are they? What are they saying? He is a uh, reserve sheriff's deputy. Whatever, whatever that means. I'm not sure. The guy's 73 years old, so he can't be an on-duty cop. Wow. Um, uh, he says taser, taser, and he shoots the guy dead. Shoots him in the back and through his chest. Um, and and the claim is that he meant to use his taser. Um, now. Tulsa prosecutors filed a second-degree manslaughter charge against the 70-year-old. Uh, his name is Robert Bates. Um, a police investigator said that Bates, God, they have to throw in who is white, um, who is who is human, uh, thought he drew his stun gun, not his handgun, when he fired at 44-year-old Eric Harris, who is human, in the April 2nd incident. Um so he's charged with second-degree manslaughter involving culpable negligence, said uh, Tuls Tulsa County District Attorney. And what the Oklahoma law defines culpable negligence is the omission to do something when a reasonably careful person would do or the lack of usual, usual ordinary care and caution in the performance of an act usually and ordinarily ex exercised by a person under similar similar circumstances and conditions. So basically that means whatever the heck they want it to, whenever they want it to, because no human can tell me what that, that statement actually means. Um, <laughs> yeah. And this is all on video, it's sick. Um, the, the, the guy on the ground, um, when the cops are on top of him, you know, he's like, uh, I, I'm losing my breath, I'm losing my breath. And right before the video cuts out, the cop who shot him is like, fuck your breath. Wow. And uh, yeah, it's sick. I I'm not really sure what this the the man who was shot is alleged to have done. Why he was being chased, um, I'm not sure. But he was running away, so I, I don't think that he was a threat to these people. To I've, be quite honest, I uh, over the last uh, I don't know three four weeks, I've seen at least eight of these um, kinds of videos. Um, I haven't even seen this one. Um, not that I know of at least. Um, and some of them are just actually one of them. Uh, it seemed like one person actually felt bad, uh, legitimately, excuse me, about what he did. Um, and you, so this video, uh, a woman came out of a house, apparently, um, her son was uh, had mental problems or something, and uh, she had called the cops because she needed help or something uh, because of the son. And the son is probably the way I saw it was like a teenager. Um, and what he had in his hand was a screwdriver. Uh, the cops said, "Hey, put them down." Drew their guns, said it again, and then. Uh, the one that you uh, are in the point of view of, he shoots and kills him. Though he, they're both, you know, yelling at him still after they shoot him. Uh, put the screwdriver down. Put it down now, you know, for like two, three minutes. And then they start realizing, hey, this kid is actually dead. Oh, yeah, I shot him. You're a fucking idiot. That's all I'm thinking, you know. And um, so... The guy felt remorse, I, the way I saw it. Um, and the other cop was saying, no, it's okay. This happens all the time. Or the way, you know, what I heard out of his mouth uh, wasn't what he said. But, um, yeah, it's okay. Don't worry about it. Th that kind of thing. It just wrote it off, no problem. And the woman, uh, the, the mom, is crying bloody murder this whole time. And she's like, ah, you know, why are you doing this? And I'm like, geez, I can't even watch the rest of this thing. You know, this this happens way too often. It, it happens 
the way I see it, twice a week. We are getting video captured of this kind of thing at least twice a week now. And that means it's happening much more than that because who has a video on or a camera on them all the time? Um, or who's going to whip it out that quickly? I don't really care if he has remorse. Like, I guess, right. thanks, bud. Like, I appreciate it, I guess, but don't really right. care. Well, um, it's, not, it's I guess it's better to, I don't know. It means at least he's sort of human. But the fact that we're, like, noticing, I don't know, the fact that we're taking into consideration and it's a big deal that we notice that somebody feels bad for killing somebody is, what the hell does that say about about the whole state of things. Oh, of course, of course. Yeah. I, I'm not saying this is right at all. I, yeah, I'm just I saying, wow, it's the first time I ever saw it. And I can't even like look at my Facebook wall lately. It's just like every yeah. other thing I see is cop, cop murders, cop violence, police throws grenade at baby. Like it's just, it's insane, man. Yeah, it's literally sick. Yeah. Wow. I mean, we could go on and on about this subject alone. Uh, so, uh, so next, I'd rather not. <laughs> so next week we might be changing things up a little bit. Um, I think we're going to try to incorporate a Q and a feature into the show. So you guys can ask questions to us and, uh, chime in with any comments or I'm wrong all the time. So you can correct me like, Hey motherfucker, you were wrong. This is actually the, the number, the statistic, whatever. Right. Um, and we'll take your guys' questions and answer them to the best of our ability. We're eventually going to work up to call-ins, but we figure this is a good way to start. So. Oh, it's a great idea. Yeah. Let's move on. And uh, we, uh, I'd rather not talk about currency. I'd rather wait till the end for that. So, um, yeah. Anything else? Uh, you had a couple more, didn't you, or not? Uh, not articles. I have a, a no. uh, something I'm proud of going on in my life right now. Do it. I quit smoking cigarettes, and today is is one month. Yeah. Yeah. Um, got the vaporizer. I I know you guys are watching me do it the whole time, and yeah, I'm using it a lot. But uh, it's just water vapor pe vapor people. Yeah. So oh, that's, that's pretty a, cool. What's going on? Um, I hear your your lady your lady friend got a new job. Um. Well, it's actually uh, at the same place. She got a promotion, so that's that's huge. So she's not. Uh, surrounded by a lot of customers let's say all at once so she's in a office working on her own so that's a good great thing. i think that's an improvement good for her and we're going to be moving in a couple weeks so that's, yep. that's on that's on deck as well so you already getting ready uh yeah sort of um <laughs> uh we, we still need to buy a couple bins but uh yeah Basically, we're we're mentally ready for this. Absolutely, get get out of Massachusetts. Yeah. So. Yeah, uh, but that's another thing. I really can't wait to get out of Massachusetts for the fact that over the winter we won't have that problem of oh, will I be cooped up in my apartment or whatever just because they shut down the roads? Ah, uh, socialized roads. <laughs> are you uh, Are you going to get a gun? Uh, we're thinking about it and we're, well, you know, we're going to go to a range and start, uh, practicing, learning how to make use of it. I've never touched a gun in my life to be honest. Yeah. So, I'd uh, say it's a good idea to get your feet wet before you buy one. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. How are you doing though? Uh, anything Great. changing in your life or? Uh, the cigarette thing's a big deal. That's about, that's about the, the biggest thing I got going on. Yeah, man. I'm drinking some some sweet cannabis tea in my sweet anarchy cup over here. Dude, that's the coolest cup. Yeah. Where'd you get that? Um, John Moss, his wife, Hallie, and their daughter made it for me for Christmas. Wow. Uh -huh. That's cool. Wow. Even has something yep. on the bottom. Yeah, the voluntary V. I can't, I, I guess. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Drink up. <laughs> um, they, made, they made Karen a Hello Kitty one. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> not my thing, but okay. No, no, that's cool. That's cool. Um, I'm not gonna bring up the weather. I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> I, I um, had to because you know I'll be moving. So yeah, just like I felt like this winter, it always came up, but wasn't it relevant? Kinda. Yeah. 
in the meantime, let me go over the prices of the currency right now. Last time we did this show was April 6th, uh, and tonight is April 13th. Uh, so silver was 1683. Tonight it's 1632. That's 51 cents. Uh, that's a 3% drop. Gold went from 1211.39 to uh, 1214. That's an $11.25 uh, drop. That's 0.9%. Bitcoin went from 255.05 to 223.72. That's 31 cents, uh, 31 dollars 33 cents, and that's 12.3 percent. So a uh, big drop for Bitcoin, but again, they're all dropping still. And of course, we're using this in dollar terms, so technically, it really doesn't matter because you know time to buy. That's it. That's it, man. Because uh, I haven't even bought silver in some time now, uh, but I'd like to start buying again because yeah. uh, why not? You know, uh, that's another thing. I'm trying to get myself out of debt. Uh, like I just paid, excuse me, I just paid a hefty sum to uh, try to pay off a student loan. Uh, and on that loan, I, I've got a lot of student loans. I hate debt, but um on that loan, I've got uh, like two hundred bucks left on it. So you want to go? You want to go to an Occupy protest? <laughs> no. <laughs> so um, last uh, last time I heard, uh, you know, there were a lot of people trying to promote the idea of ending the Fed, which is a small piece of what we need to end. But it's probably the biggest problem with the financial sector, of course. So end the Fed, uh, but yeah, I'm not going to an Occupy protest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't say much about the prices. I haven't been watching. It's been like a for fanboys. It's been a, a pretty big week. Like Game of Thrones just came back. Daredevil mm. was just released on Netflix. I just got a new stack of comic books. So I've just been I've been doing other things, you know. Yeah, man. Um, Facebook's just full of cop cops killing people, and that makes me like puke in my mouth. I don't want to be seeing that stuff anymore. Yeah, seriously. So, yeah, I just haven't been watching. I haven't been watching the news. Like, I don't mean watching the news, you know, but my um, news sources, I haven't been checking. I haven't been doing any of it, really. I don't mean to make this a uh, comic book show, but uh, I can't wait for the next Avengers movie, to be honest. Oh, God. And that's you coming me, up. You don't want to start. You don't want me to do this. You don't want to <laughs> get me started, man. You don't. Um... <laughs> Anyway, Big, all right, uh, let's let's stop, then. <laughs> that's all right. Comic but, uh, books yeah. surrounding everywhere. Um, I think it's great that, uh, you know, honestly, it, we all need to break out of this, uh, you know, crazy world. You know, all the news that we constantly hear about, you know, governments doing this, governments doing this, police, military, uh, you know, everything. So it's kind of nice to have a muse or, you know, just you escape yourself into something completely different like me and games, you and comics. Yeah. It, yeah. Seriously. And it's an escape. Yeah. So yeah, I, I, I like, I need my entertainment to keep me sane. Like last week I wanted to, I thought the best course of action was to destroy the whole world, you know? Right. I, I'm still not entirely opposed to that, but I'm, I've, I've calmed down a little bit. Um, <laughs> You know, um, yeah, you just gotta gotta be able to turn it off sometimes, and it's I know it's really difficult. Like even when I'm reading my book comics or whatever, I'm like, oh, you, you can know, make analogies all day. Yeah, the whole time, and like it almost ruins things for me. But you just gotta try to turn it off, and yeah, That's some it. people will 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 hate on you for doing that kind of stuff. Like, oh, you're not putting enough effort into the liberty movement or whatever. Well, yeah, if 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 stress gives me a heart attack, then I'm not going to be doing very much for the liberty movement either. So, yeah, exactly. You know, yeah, moderation. major escape. Everybody does. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, we could talk about uh, currency all day, but uh, yeah, that, that's another thing. So uh, we could talk about war and everything. Um, I don't want to, you know, get into the personal aspects here. But uh, I do. I am curious about um, 
why it is that people get so bent on thinking that they are doing the right thing when they're in the military. They're literally, seriously, completely doing the opposite of the right thing. But it's amazing that they get that brainwashed and think that they're helping their fellow man or their countrymen or whatever the hell they want to say. Uh, That's exactly it. Yep. They're taught in government schools and made to be stupid and compliant. And by I don't mean stupid as an un unintelligent, but I mean stupid as in not critically think. And then their whole lives, they're like shown the, that that song on TV, like like that epic song yeah. and flags waving and people cheering and like this whole nationalist mentality that soldiers are heroes and stuff is fed into them their whole lives. Then they get into the army and they're fed exactly the same thing, but kind of like that they're better than civilians at that point. And, you know, that's why. Yeah, I mean... It, it, and it's not just the military either. Like everybody has to do the Fourth of July thing, and yeah. I, I, I used to think that it, it was beautiful, but really, it was literally about bombs. Those fireworks <laughs> are about bombs, and uh, you know that's why there's a big bang. That's why this and that, and everybody's there to see war. That's literally what they're going to see. Uh, they think it's about independence. Yeah, that's, even the, the that's that stupid song, the national anthem has uh, the rockets' red glare. Like, what what do people think that is? You know? Yeah. Right. Yeah. I I, I find it fascinating that I never put two and two together until just a few years ago, and and everybody really is brought up with it and literally brainwashed until either they wake up or they die. That's that's the truth, honestly, um, and it, it, it's pretty scary. I I wish I um, I wish I knew better, you know. And I kind of put myself down, and I bet not many people do. But um, you know, it's almost like you're you're mad at yourself for being that dumb. You know, <laughs> that's exactly what it is for me. And hell, I was dumb enough to join the bitch. Yeah. Right, yeah, absolutely. Right. And you're not the only one. I mean, I find it fascinating, though, um, you know, that these myths can be so pervasive. Um, this is like, I mean, I only did... 3 million people or 300 million people, that is. Go ahead. I only did community college, but this, this is why I like sociology so much. Like, the way that I, like, just ideas and, like, um, Stefan Molyneux often talks about how words are, are are magic and how politicians are wizards. Um, yeah. And it's, it's a perfect analogy. And that's exactly what it is. Like these people like cast spells on, on, on the populace and, and these mindless drones will just buy into any of it. And they're just, they follow the leader and do what they're told and they believe what they're told to believe. And it's been going on for thousands and thousands of years. So that's it. Like, the internet's that's helping, I think. Yeah, yeah. I, I think most people are uh, born to be followers and others are either smarter or meant to be leaders. Or, I, But at the same time, that can't be fully true either because there are plenty of entre entrepreneurs being leaders on their own. And I, I got to be wrong, and I hope I am. I think people are born to be individuals. That's the right answer. <laughs> yeah, the rest of it's what they are. Uh, nurture, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, ANCAP, that's me. Yes, I do. Pr I attribute myself to the label of ANCAP. There are some things I don't fully agree with, but that doesn't mean that I don't believe in capitalism. You know what I mean? Um, I believe in... Michael Freemanism. I'm just gonna do my. I'm just gonna do my thing and Ism. just do what I do. What I need to do. Trade you know if I mean. want to. Not trade if I want to. Yeah. Whatever. I'm not gonna um, try to uh, do any government stuff. Hey Jordan, can you? Uh, he said he's not muted on his end. Uh, 
Do you have a microphone that isn't working? Is your microphone part of your laptop? Is your microphone... Yes. Okay. Um, can you go, go into, into the that. volume control? Do you use a Mac? Do you have a Mac or Windows? Go oh. into volume control and like the volume settings inside the computer and check. I suppose. Yeah, that's that's all I can think of. <clears throat> yeah, he's there. It's not making a difference. All right. Um, he's never had problems with Skype. Maybe we can do that next time. I guess, Jordan, we're going to have to try to bring you back in next time, I guess. I mean, we really only have 15 minutes anyways. Um, I'll talk to you offline, and we'll get you back on here. All right, sorry guys. Uh, we sorry, tried. Man. We yeah. tried. Um, we will definitely get Jordan Page back on the show another time um, to play oh. a song and yeah, talk next with week, us. Man. Next week. Oh yeah, next week. Absolutely. It was just going to be you and I. So that's it. Yes. So yeah, we'll do it next week uh, as long as as he's down. Uh, you know what I just heard? A difference in sound. Me too. Okay, you were um, muffled, and then once he left. You became crisp and nice. I noticed and clear. that too. Yeah, I noticed the same for you though too. That's crazy. Yeah, something's wrong with his device probably, or just I I don't know what to say. I that's Google. What can I say? Next time we'll just get on early and figure it out. No big deal. That's it. Um. Right. Uh. So for uh, just for the. Final show. I want to throw in that Jordan won't be joining us. Uh, we had some technical di issues right there, uh, so we're going to fill out the time slot. Um, me and Michael, uh, and we do expect Jordan to be back uh, for next week. So that's going to be awesome, um, at least at the time being, or for the time being. Anyway, uh, let's talk. So uh, so. So the week following next week, we have uh, Dr. Block joining us. I'm yes. sure you're pretty excited for that. Uh, yeah, I have a little bit of backstory on that. Um, I had a, uh, a show called The Currency of Democracy. That was the original show. And that was just in d the local town of Danvers, Massachusetts. And uh, But I had a whole hour-long special that I actually edited. Uh, most of my shows back then were totally live, right to tape, and went to the air. And um, But that one I took about a month to prepare uh, because it was all about uh, what we could do uh, with the roads um, if they were all privatized. And, uh, and, you know, most of my material came from Walter Block, but I, I had a couple of ideas of my own. But um, he, this guy, to me, is a genius in a way. Uh, not so much that any entrepreneur couldn't come up with it himself, but um, for what it is right now, it, everybody's always worried about, oh, what are we going to do with the roads? <laughs> so uh, I had a long special about that, and it was all because of him, and this guy is awesome, I think. I like I like Walter Block because while he's educated, well academically respected and articulated, he's as extreme as they come. Just like just like me, and I like that. I can relate yeah. to the guy. Yeah, Tom Woods is just like that too. Um, Lou well, Lou as well. See, with me, I I have um, I do worry about uh, guys like Tom and Lou uh, because they still have arguments in a status point of view sometimes. But every time I've heard Walter Block speak, he's an anarchist all the way. Like, he is an extreme awesome guy. <laughs> like, just an anarchist. Just your normal Joe walking up and down the street. You know, yes, he is uh, well-educated, but you can you feel totally comfortable talking to him, and I know it. Uh, you'd feel totally comfortable talking to Lou and Tom, I believe, as well. But um, they, you know, they often talk in um, uh, minarchist kind of points of views. You know what I mean? Sure. Uh, all I'm saying is, Walter is the guy. 
to go to. <laughs> I don't know, whatever. But yeah, this guy, he's going to be on two weeks from now. And uh, he's been on Michael Shanklin's shows quite a bit. I believe once a month or something like that. So um, yeah, he's familiar with Voluntary Virtues Network. That's great. Good stuff. Cool. Um, yeah, and in the we have like two or three months lined up, don't we? Something, something like that. Yeah, that it's it's crazy. Uh, awesome people coming to uh, find us, and uh, yeah, we've been poking our heads out of the sand and trying to find uh, people to come onto the show, of course, as well. But it's it's great to hear that, um, you know, all because of you, Michael. You're a networker. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about all that. Um, but yeah, like Jordan sought us out, and that, that that's pretty cool. Um, I heard uh, a segment on Free Talk Live a, a, a couple, like last month, where a kid like mentioned our show as one of his, his influences. I forget his name. If you're watching, thank you. Um, <laughs> and he mentioned Liberty Doll as well, um, and that was pretty cool. Right. So yeah, maybe, maybe, and I think that this Q&A thing could, could, could improve the game a little bit and call-ins eventually. We have to buy some some equipment in order to pull that off. But, um, yeah, the Q&A could be cool. Yeah. And it could fill in time like this when we're just kind of bantering back and forth. We could go to the to the message board and, and take some questions or whatever, maybe read off comments that people have, stuff like that. Yeah, that's it. We and uh, while, we have, uh, while we're talking about uh, – how uh, people communicate with us. I want you to know how you can find us. You can find us at youtube.com slash user slash curb anarchy. And we have a video uh, every Wednesday uh, edited and everything. Uh, so, but the live show is on Mondays. We're taping this live right now, uh, Monday, the April 13th. And uh, you can find our Facebook page at facebook.com slash curb anarchy as well. So please go ahead and do that. Uh, anyway, uh, you know what I, I was thinking about the other day? Uh, so many people love, you know, cats and dogs. Why don't we have more cat memes on our page? Or, uh, you know, I don't, I don't care I don't like cats per se. But, you yeah. know, I, I, I find that interesting. Maybe we can find more people doing that kind um, of thing. You could um, you that can be that can be your additional duty here, Josh. You can handle that one. I I trust your judgment. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> no, I don't either. I trust your judgment a lot more than I trust mine, though. Oh, okay. <laughs> um. Yeah, I don't know about I don't know about dog and cat memes. Let's talk about that offline. Um. <laughs> And expect to pay a pay cut for mentioning that on air. <laughs> no, um, just kidding, guys. We don't really get paid to do this. Not, um, not like that. We have one provider a little bit, and, and she's coming on the show, um, Holly, uh, next early next month, I think. Uh, who else is joining us for that that show? Uh, Adam Williams. Uh, yes, and yes. I'll contact him about that. But Great. also, yes, we do have uh, another advertiser coming up pretty soon. If not for this episode, we'll see. I believe we will. Holly Cogburn runs Homebody, a body care, vanity, and cosmetic products company. She contracts using USD, Bitcoin, Homebody products, and fresh produce. She is proud to say that she started the business without the assistance of bank loans. In her words, fuck bank loans and fuck their interest rates. For the most part, fuck banks. She paid for costs out of pocket and has steadily and sustainably grown from there. She believes in a free, fair, and reputation-based market. So please find Holly at homebodyco.com or facebook.com slash homebodyco. Introducing a customized media player with no monthly fees. A one-time purchase and installation of this device and you are ready to watch the latest movies and TV shows for free. Anything you can imagine or want to watch can be found on the box connected to your home internet connection. These units are locked and loaded using Android and Linux technology. You get access to over 7,000 channels all over the world, live, including sporting events, pay-per-view, wrestling, boxing, and more. 
Google Play Store comes pre-installed with access to all Android apps, including Popcorn Time, Showbox, Netflix, Facebook, Pandora, and more. All units are rooted and have capability to download or play from a USB or external hard drive. Please call Paul at 978-335-9842 or email him directly at info at paulhennick.com. All right, here, here's a question for you. Who is your actual favorite economist? Is it Rothbard? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, probably. Um, yeah, I'd say. Like, I, I liked Hayek a lot when I was doing the Ron Paul thing, but not as much anymore, you know? Yeah. What about, what about you? Um, I think Mises really is, actually. Mises or... Um, well, Walter Block or Tom Woods, he's up there as well. Uh, actually, it's I do know this about Tom. He is originally from Andover, Massachusetts. So, really? yeah, he uh, grew up in Andover, and but then he he's been all over the map, pretty much anywhere east of the Mississippi. So, yeah. Anyway, that's that's what I know about Tom, but. Uh, um uh, Mises, well, he's pretty much the originator of Austrian economics. Uh I believe there was someone just before him, but he took after this uh, I, I don't remember this other guy's name. But basically, uh I have two books from Mises and um uh, I have a uh one from Hayek as well. Uh that's I, I actually, yes, I still have Ron Paul books as well. <laughs> and judge. Yeah, I read, um, I think the only Ron Paul, I read, I read End the Fed a couple of years ago. Yeah, that, that was the first one I had from them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think the only econ book I really have is Anatomy of the State by Rothbard right now. That's cool. Yeah. Like, I've, um, I've been trying to read Human Action by Mises, but dude, I can't, I, I can't do it. It's like impossible. It's the yeah. driest thing I've ever looked at. And I know it's like, like the number one thing an anar anarchist or an anarcho capitalist or a volunteerist should read, but I can't, I can't do it. Yeah. That's the thing. It's dry as hell. Uh, it's, yeah. it's tough to read economics in the first place. It doesn't matter what it is. Yeah. yeah. Like Rothbard at least keeps you entertained. He yeah. hates, he hates on the state while explaining economics to you. Yeah, a little more than human action does that that I notice anyways. But mind you, I've only gotten through like 40 pages of the bitch. So don't really take my word for it. <laughs> yeah, that's it. But um, yeah, I, I feel comfortable wrapping it up if you want. Yeah, you yeah. Good? So um, yeah, everybody. Uh, sorry for the short show, but um, we will have Jordan Page on next week as far as I know. Um, and I'm hoping to have him, you know, fully capable uh and internet ready it's gonna be interesting we both love music so this this should be great yeah so we'll see you soon uh we'll be back here with jordan page uh next week and that will be april 20th this show will be out on april 15th tax day one thing we definitely don't want to talk about um, and yeah, please check out our Facebook page, facebook.com slash cur, slash cur of anarchy and check out the YouTube page, youtube.com slash user slash cur of anarchy. And, uh, thank you all for watching. Take care.